Wait, what are you doing? Uh, I'm drilling a hole. <laughs> with what? With, with these tools. There's a drill bit <laughs> and this hammer. It's not a drill bit, man. It's not a drill bit? No, where are you from? I'm from Gloria VBA. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna tell you a little more about drill bits, okay? Okay. Okay. Alright, I'll, let me show you what a real drill bit is, alright? Alright, sure, teach me. Here it is. What was that? Now let's see how drill bits are made. We will be taking a look at twist drills. First, we start off with a cylindrical bar of metal. We cut this to length and approximate width using a computerized lathe. As you can see, this machine is cutting this piece of metal into the approximate length. These drill blanks are then heat treated and quenched to increase hardness and strength. You can see the before and after of heat treatment. Drill blanks are inserted into a computer guided grinder with two wheels made from boron nitride granules which are tough and abrasive. The first grinding wheel shapes the bit into lengthwise spirals called flutes. The second grinding wheel carves sharp edges on the flutes and shapes the tip to a point. As you can see, this machine is carving the sharp tip point on the drill bit. After this process, the drill bit is finally ready. Here is the final product of the drill bit. What are the functional requirements for the drill bit? And the six requirements we have are here. The first one is a really important one, which is torsional stress. This is really important for drill bits because the application involves having torque applied to one end of the shaft of the drill bit and a reaction force by the material applying the torque in the opposite direction. So this creates a shear force and can possibly create a fracture in the drill bit. Buckling is also another important one. This is when there's a compressive force happening and this is when you're applying a normal force to the drill when you're drilling holes into a material. Also, you want high stiffness value for your drill bits because if you're drilling by accident on an angle, you don't want the drill bit to deflect or possibly fracture due to not having a good stiffness value. Also, the angular twist is important because when you're applying a torque, you don't want the drill bit to twist in a way so that it fractured in the middle and basically all it, is, it requires to withstand high torque values. Also, red hardness is important because as the RPM increases with the drill bits, it creates a lot of friction with the material. And with the friction, it causes it, the drill bits to heat up. So having a high hardness value means that you would retain your hardenability as the material heats up. Lastly, it's wear because, as you know, you need to use them for a long time. So having high wear means that the material will not shave or clip off when you're drilling into materials for a long time. Oh, I want to make my own drill bit now! Did someone say drill bits? Our teacher has to use the right material selection process. Just listen to me! Before we can start our MPI derivation, there are certain critical values which were chosen based off of research. The first one is the maximum force, which was chosen to be 600 newtons. This was chosen because the max amount of force an average person can exert when pushing horizontally with both hands was determined to be 600 newtons. The radius was 6.35 e to the negative 3 meters. This was chosen based off of the max clutch size of a standard hand drill. The cost was $3 Canadian per kilogram, which was the average cost of the most commonly used material for drill bits. The determined torque was given to be 80 newton meters, which was chosen from the standard hand drill output torque. As for deflection, we chose it to be as minimum as possible as we want the drilling to be as accurate as possible. Okay, so for our first stage, we had a torsional stress limit. And we found the maximum torsional stress we wanted. And we had to convert this to a tensile strength. Because on the CES software, there was no place where you can find a torsional limit. And by doing this, we found a tensile strength of 0 0.698 gigapascals and that was the limit we set that all materials had to have. This was the graph that pr was produced and all these materials had our 
maximum tensile strength or more. Our second stage was buckling and we had three assumptions. First one was it was a cylinder. The second one was it was fixed at one end. And the third assumption was that the force was at the opposite end, then it was fixed. This was a free body diagram and it produced a n of 3 over 2 for the next equation. This was the equation for force critical and we isolated it in terms of L, which was our free variable. And these were the values we put into the equation. We put the L value into the cost equation and got the geometric, the functional, and the MPI portions of the cost equation. We found the K value, which was needed to find the MPI by dividing cost by the K value. And we found the MPI. And we found the slope to be negative one. And also for this MPI, we wanted to maximize it since E was at the top and cost times density was at the bottom. We found a point after by subbing in 100 for the cost times density and we also had a slope by, from the previous. This was the line that formed and it filtered out even more options than stage one because we had more requirements. For stiffness, we followed the same process as buckling where we made the assumptions of it being a cylinder fixed at one end and the force is applied at the other end. We made the free body diagram and followed the same process for isolating for L. And then by putting it back into the cost equation, you found the slope and the point. And it produced this graph which further narrowed down our materials we can choose from. For the angle of twist, again, the same process was followed where the assumptions were it was a cylinder and fixed at one end. And we isolated for L and subbed it back into the cost equation to find the slope and a point to make this graph. And it further narrowed down our materials we can choose from. For the red hardness, we had to set a limit of good to very good and this narrowed down our materials a lot. For wear, we followed the same process as red hardness and it left us with seven di different materials we can choose from. So with the remaining steels, we ranked them in terms of tensile strength because we thought torsional strength was the most important functional requirement and torsional strength is a function of tensile strength. And the top three materials that were remaining included ASI M42, ASI M41, and ASI M43. However, ASI M42 was chosen because it has the highest tensile strength to cost ratio. Oh wow, I finally found my material using MPI. What are some issues not included in the MPI? With this material I found using MPI, it will never fail. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, so one of the foreseeable issues that the MPI did not account for is if you're using it in a t cold temperature, for example in the Arctic, it leads to brittle fracture or failure because as the temperature decreases, the material becomes more brittle and if you put too much force on it, it can fracture. Okay, so another foreseeable issue that can come up is the formation of rust in the drill bit. And this can happen with outdoor use and possibly rainwater getting trapped in the curved edges, which can lead to a concentration cell being formed. And this was not accounted for in the MPI because drill bits are not normally used where there's a lot of rainwater. Let's take a look at the current versus our chosen material. Current material. Currently, there are three main types of materials being used high-speed steel, cobalt steel, and carbide steel. Each of the following differ from a small amount of alloying element in the material. In cobalt steel, there is 5 to 8% cobalt alloying element in this material. This allows for the material to be even stronger, but it sacrifices ductility for strength. Therefore, cobalt steel can drill into harder materials than high-speed steels. For carbide steel, it has an even higher strength than cobalt steel. This material is used for the most demanding applications. Chosen material. The chosen material was determined to be a type of high carbon steel. This is likely due to other engineers having the same objective to minimize cost. However, cobalt steel and carbide steel do not survive the selection process. This is due to the carbide and cobalt steel requiring a higher cost than average drill bits. As a result, they do not fit the cost restraint. Let's talk about the history of the drill and the drill bit. The drill is one of the most common tools for use in metalworking, construction, 
and other woodworking projects. This versatile tool allows the user to fasten materials together and bore holes of various lengths. Drill bits come in the traditional spiral shape as well as in conical core and spade shapes. The diameter and length for each of these types varies by the intended use. Additionally, materials used to make the bits range from high and low carbon steel to carbides and diamonds. The first type of drill was used around 35,000 before Christ. It was a pointed rock spun around the palms of the hand. It wasn't very efficient and had little accuracy. The second type of drill was made out of wooden sticks and string 10,000 years ago, and it was called the bull drill. It was not until the 13th century that man began using metal pieces as drill bits. This drill was mainly designed to cut through woods and softer materials due to its limited rotating speed. Another variation of the hand drill was the wheel brace, aka egg beater. This hand drill was made using metal gears to translate rotational motion of the crank to the drill tip. With modern technology, the first powered hand drill was created in 1889 by Black & Decker. Now in the modern era, we use drills with interchangeable drill bits. These drills run at constant torque, and the drill bits experience a normal force to the surface, which can be used perpendicular to the surface or at an angle. So what's the best choice of material? We concluded that high-speed steel is the best choice in our given scenario. Since our goal was to minimize cost for the consumer, we chose that high-speed steel was the best option. By choosing other materials that were more expensive, this would have been overboard for the application. Thanks for watching.